One small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. It's possibly the most iconic moment of the 20th century, and once the news had spread that man had landed on the moon on the 20th of July 1969, it sent shockwaves around the world. New Zealand was no exception. There was just general excitement. People sitting watching TVs uh, or watching TVs outside shops that sold them and things like that. And, and of course, the local amateur astronomers uh, really uh, turned on uh, observing sessions and things with telescopes. That was retired astronomer Frank Andrews, who was 30 at the time of the first moon landing. Our view of the universe has expanded uh, vastly in that time. And, of course, I've lived through this whole period of change as the our view of the universe has changed. But despite that, and each of these things has been high, a highlight. The moon stands out as special because man actually got out there in person. Wellingtonians will get a chance to see rare moon rocks from the landings between 1969 and 1972 at a special event at Te Papa tomorrow. We went behind the scenes with curators and GNS science geologist Paul Hoskin. So this rock here is, is basalt rock. And when you look at the, the moon with your, your naked eye at night time, you can see a lot of sunlight being reflected off the moon. And the most reflective part of the moon is made up of large, large, massive lava flows of that rock there. Te Papa curator Stephanie Gibson says the rocks from 1969 were brought to New Zealand by American officials. So the US government under President Richard Nixon uh, decided to share the incredible landing on the moon in 1969 with the nations of the earth by giving everybody a wee sample plus a flag of their nation that had been taken up. But it wasn't without controversy. Vice President of the United States, Spiro um, Agnew, came over for a state visit in January 1970 and he brought the moon rock sample with him and he presented it at a state banquet in Auckland and he presented it to the Prime Minister, Keith Holyoke, and it was all very wonderful, lots of fanfare. But at the same time outside were about 500 protesters protesting against the Vietnam War and against um, the American involvement and so and New Zealand involvement too, of course, in supporting America. So quite violent protests going on at the same time about, you know, why we're we celebrating all this expense and this focus on the moon when there are some really serious issues going on down on planet Earth. Space Place at Wellington's Carter Observatory is hosting a panel discussion for the public on the moon landings tomorrow night. Its senior science communicator, Haratina Mogashano, has had a lifelong fascination with the moon, which has led her to do an internship through NASA. I've always had tears in my eyes watching people landing on the moon, and for me it's more from a space perspective. And I think it's an extraordinary goal. You know, you look at the moon and it's so far away, but you can still see details. And I remember when I was a kid, I was watching Tycho. It's a very big crater on the moon. I was looking at it with binoculars and thinking, wow, wouldn't it be amazing to, to be there and look back at, at Earth? Miss Mogashano is excited there is finally a plan to return to the moon. The Americans have a plan to go there. It's called Artemis, which is Apollo's sister. Very, uh, very funny. <laughs> and... Um, they, they're going to go back and they want to put the first woman on the moon, which it's going to be very exciting as well, of course, because until now only men went on the moon. Student Space Association Wellington President Daniel Wrench is thrilled New Zealand is joining the latest space race. Just obviously in the small satellite industry at the moment with Rocket Lab kind of being really a game changer in that industry, you know, doing things that have never been done before. You know, we have rockets launching out of Gisborne, which is like an amazing idea. The geology student is setting his own sights high. Yeah, the dream would be to somehow link my geology studies with my passion for space and learn about other planets, geology on Mars, things like that. So I think it's definitely a bit of overlap. Um, and something I find really cool is that the only non-pilot to walk on the moon was a geologist. So. Fingers crossed. Lift off. We have a lift off. So 50 years on, the excitement of space is still as strong as ever. And who knows where it will eventually take us. For Morning Report, Core Charlie Drever, DNA.